Hello everyone and welcome to my hardware review of the Momo Mod 27C Pro SLI wheel. It's an absolute mouthful and I'm not going to be doing too many of these hardware reviews, it's not my specialty. Um, but the guys who make this hybrid racing simulations do a fantastic job and I wanted to give them a bit of a shout out and a bit of a review on what I think is one of their best pieces of equipment they're currently putting out. Straight off the bat, one of the biggest downsides to this wheel is of course it's not, unless you've got a special quick release, not compatible with your Fanatec Elites, your you know Thrustmasters, your Logitechs, whatever it might be. This is definitely something made for a direct drive wheel, a Simu Cube, an Augury, something with a quick release that is custom made and makes life very, very easy. So if you don't have one of them, this isn't going to be the review for you, but if you do, I'm going to be going over why I think this is definitely worth your money. So right off the bat, why did I choose this wheel rim over everything else? The biggest selling point for me right off the bat was it's not limited to one category. If you get an open wheel or a Formula 1 style, you're stuck to driving on tarmac for the most part. You can drive F1s, GTs, touring cars, whatever it might be, sure. But if you wanted to do a rally or something, you're instantly very limited, especially in oversteer moments where you might have to do hand over hand. Because whereas this wheel I can grip, if you had an open wheel rim, you can't grip anywhere. It's just the open wheel makes life very, very tricky. So for me, who does a little bit of rally cross on the side as well, this is a perfect mix for me because I've got the GT style, everything I need. It's also a bit open as well. So I've got that nice visibility of the screen. Nothing's being blocked on the screen by the actual top of the wheel. But if I want to do rally cross, I can still get my oversteer moments in and be totally safe in those situations. So as for the actual wheel rim itself, as you can see, it's a very nicely displayed. The quality is absolutely incredible. Nothing has been cheaped out on and it is just fantastic to hold. It feels very, very solid. One of the first things you notice about this wheel when you're actually using it is the amazing paddle shifts. You can probably hear it there pretty damn loud, which is actually good. I do like that. I like the actual feel. So you press it down and it'll just slowly collapse. You can just feel it. It'll just go one solid press feels very, very cool. You're never going to have to worry about whether you've pressed the pedal or not. You always know the tactile response is very, very good. And it's high quality too, so you don't have to worry about what happens with some cheaper wheels, where it might not register in some places, or even worse, double downshifts and you can risk blowing your engine or something like that. So these uh, paddle shifts, very, very good, very responsive, absolutely love them. The next thing to talk about is without a doubt the two dials on the front rotary encoders and very very cool bits of kit. This one down the bottom on iRacing I'm using for my fuel maps so being able to say fuel all of that positions 1 through 12 so plenty of options if your car has all ranges of fuel maps this wheel has you covered and then on the right I'm using for my brake bias it's got a little a uh, little logo there for boost if you want to set it for your ERS deployment or something in an F1 car. Very cool idea for me personally being a GT driver using it for my brake bias. The one issue I do have with this dial though is if you want to go one click up, what you've actually got to do is you've got to press two clicks forward because the wheel will automatically default to one step back. I think it's just a bit of a electric like wiring glitch or something along the lines but basically if you go two clicks forward and then it will make itself go one click back. So if you only press it forward once, it will go back one step itself. You won't have actually made a change to the car at all. One little fault, I'm sure it'd be very easy fix. Right now I'm not too fast about it. It's very easy to learn, very easy to adjust to it. So happy days there. SLI display is a very, very cool feature. Um, the RPM lights are up here and you can change them to however you like. They are a really, really customizable feature. So you have them from the left to right if you want them. You can have the F1 style where they'll start from the outside and slowly meet in the middle and that's when you shift. Uh, I think the Mercedes AMG GT3 uses that system as well. Um, I've actually gone for a similar feature to that but it's actually only a single light. So it'll only be one light uh, going from either side to meet in the middle. It looks really, really cool. Hard to explain but otherwise a cool feature. A few numbers on the left, I have my position on the right as well, and then on this side of the screen I actually have myself with uh, my best lap delta, helps me with consistency because I feel like you actually get better information and reference off of the display than you do on the iRacing delta bar. I found myself using this a lot more than iRacing itself, which is cool. The only disadvantage of course, you have to look down at the wheel instead of focusing on where you're driving, but otherwise very cool. In the middle, what gear you're using, always helpful, especially if you are driving a Formula 1 car where you've got 8 gears or a truck, plenty to manage. 
there as well. Little warning lights down here. I've got them set for all kinds of features. Oil, uh, temperature light, you know, fuel low light. Uh, I've got this side set to mainly my flags. Green flag, yellow flag, um, and then also checkered flag. I don't know why I've got it set to the checkered flag. You usually know anyway, but you know what? If I can do it, I will do it. The buttons on the wheel are very, very nice to press. They're very solid presses, and you know exactly when you are going to be pressing them, so very, very nice indeed. Pit Limiter actually has a little bracket on it, which I'm very happy about. I'm sure um, Cam dances as well. In the uh, Imola 500 I did, I accidentally put the Pit Limiter on in front of um, Cameron Dance and we made contact. Yeah, really nice, man. Good job. Wrong button. There, both that cars were fine, but overall I accidentally bumped the uh, Pit Limiter and um, that meant I wasn't able to uh, use my push torque because I kept bumping my pit limiter. With this, it's got a protector on it, so no way of accidentally bumping the two buttons together. So if you're going to press the pit limiter, you've got to manually press it, which I think is a lot better and a lot more use as well. The wheel does come with the HRS quick release, which is just one of the best quick release systems I think on the market. Simply chuck the wheel in and then clip it down. No play whatsoever. Absolutely solid, locked in. I cannot recommend that system enough. The hybrid simulation, racing simulations, quick release, one of the best out there by a country mile. So in conclusion, if you are looking for a brand new racing wheel for your direct drive system, SimiQ2 Pro, whatever it may be, don't look further than the Momo Mod 27C Pro SLI wheel. Fantastic bit of kit. And I know for myself personally, I'll be using this long into the future great wheel and a great addition to anyone's sim racing wheel collection from me though guys that is absolutely everything i have to talk about today so i will leave you guys to the next video but in the meantime be sure to subscribe like the video tell me your thoughts on the wheel as well do you like the look of it or do you want to go for a more traditional wheel and also follow me on twitch streaming mondays wednesdays and fridays and of course new youtube videos every tuesday and thursday so guys i appreciate all the support of my last video absolutely brilliant and I shall see you guys on Thursday.